Now, I want to step into the whole idea of paying off debt or investing. So this would be the start. This is how I would guide an individual. I say, hey, let's knock out some debts. Let's get our credit up. Let's build some momentum, right? But let's also keep in mind of building intellectual property, creating value to the marketplace that we can receive passive residual income that we do the work one time and get paid forever. How do we do that? Okay. So this is velocity banking for this couple. It's how they're starting out. I only took 25 to 20K to acquire a debt tool or they'll go the HELOC route, right? Either or, those are the two options that I think is the best for them. With the help of credit cards, we could add even more velocity, but I won't get into the advanced, you know, of using two debt tools, you know, a line of credit, and a credit card. I don't want to confuse all the new people here for that. I just kind of wanted to keep it real nice, sweet, simple, to the point, get you started on your journey. I can find a question before I move on to the next thing, which is building intellectual property, starting a business, creating income, bringing value to the marketplace to speed up my debt payoff timeline. I should not be thinking, how can I take the remaining of the cash and store it somewhere and have it compound. The compound is no longer in their favor. We have to think, how can I bring value to the marketplace that would 10x my income? They need to think, how do I go from 7,400 and just simply add a zero? Add a zero, move the comma. Is that a possibility? No matter race, no matter culture, no matter beliefs, how do I go from 7,400 to 74,000 a month? I promise you, we do that. We can solve the majority of human issues on planet Earth <laughs> for this couple. Majority of them. The, the last thing to solve is their legacy, their beliefs their belief systems, whatever, you know, is working for them or not working for them. And then we're going to talk about intellectual property. How can a 61-year-old queen and a 66-year-old king build wealth from scratch with nothing? How do I do it? How do I get it? Right? How do you do it? Is it possible? I think anything is possible. Right, especially when you have the Lord, your God, as your supporter, your number one supporter is always going to be you and your faith. Right, your faith is your number one supporter. Right, it's like right next to spouse, right next to that. You know, if if you were to lose a spouse, what do you have left? Faith. Right, very important from my clients that are approaching their elder years, that when you, when you lose family members, do not lose the faith, okay? You cannot, do not lose faith, my friend, because in death, there is life. So here's just some key things to be aware of, right? In death, there is life, okay? On this channel, we combine the faith and the finances. So far, as a 24-year-old individual, I haven't been able to make sense of separating the two. Because I figured, well, when someone becomes financially free, financially fit, financially healthy, you can't but help tapping into your belief system, aka faith, and giving your time giving your money to things you care about. So why not incorporate both at the beginning? Do you really think that when you're when you become debt free that you know you're just going to pay bills and die or are you going to be a giver? Are you going to be a steward 
over your money? Are you going to you know, want to perpetuate your knowledge and wisdom? Of course. It's just a matter of where you put that money. Now, if you do not give in the beginning, when you first start, if you do not create the habit, if you do not create the rules in your household to be a giver, to be a cheerful giver, to want to help people, when you become wealthy, you will become stubborn, miserable, greedy, right? Greed will take over you because you didn't put in the, the you know, when you had a hundred dollars, you didn't give 10. What makes you think that when you have a million that you'll give a hundred thousand? Probably for most people that obtain a lot of wealth and don't give in the process of obtaining wealth, they then give what someone with $100 would give in comparison to the net worth or cash flow of the individual. So for example, this is what a lot of people do. They make a lot of money, right, over time. They don't incorporate giving into their strategy, 10% or more. And so when they actually reach a high limit of money and they start, they, they think they're giving a lot, $10,000. Oh yeah, I gave 50 grand. Dude, you make 5 million a year. What are you doing giving 50 grand? Are you, are you serious? You should be giving 500,000, right? You should be giving 250,000, right? To people to enhance people's knowledge. So you want to be able to incorporate that in the beginning. Now, the reason why I press on this is because I truly believe that when you give, you receive more than what you gave originally, plus you open blessings or you can say opportunities, right? You release things in your brain that you were not thinking of before. So maybe the wife of this household or the husband of this household, right, has a dream. Maybe they want to help kids. Maybe, uh, you know, wife wants to do some work in, I don't know, foster homes, or maybe the husband wants to start a business that helps older men, uh, you know, fix their, their mindset. Uh, maybe he wants to be a, a, a coach. Maybe the wife wants to be a coach. Maybe they find a product that's so good that, that helped with their health issues, right? So the older you get, the more health issues come up. Let's say they discovered something that you know, helps them operate throughout the day without having any back pain, right? And they become so passionate about that, that they, you know, they find a product and they start selling it, right? So those are some really, really cool things to think about.